Fox 10 News Alert. Basically no more than 30 or 40 minutes ago. Um, making a little bit of progress. Um, it appeared that his attorney was on a three-way line, was trying to assure him that, you know, we weren't here to harm him. Uh, but uh, after that, the conversation ceased. But we do know that he's, he's still alive. Um, just trying to appeal to him, you know, that, you know, he's got a reason that he needs to come out and surrender. Right now, we have gone from a uh, hostage situation to a barricade because uh, all of the hostages were taken out safely. And I can't say enough about what all the responders did, um, but most importantly, what SWAT did and all their support, uh, Homeland Security and everyone there uh, that was involved, as well as everyone that assisted in negotiations. Uh, but again, we've still got a situation that is not completely resolved. We still want to get this mail out, obviously, uh, unscathed. Uh, we don't know if he's injured. Uh, in my conversations with him, it doesn't appear that he is, but I'm not sure. Uh, so we will keep you apprised, but didn't want to uh, keep you in the dark about where we were and have you just have to speculate about the status regarding uh, the police officers and the hostages. We are very, very lucky uh, with six police officers shot in one incident. Um, it is remarkable that, you know, I believe a couple of them have been released already. And so it is nothing short of astounding that in such a confined space that we didn't have more of a tragedy than we did. So we're so thankful uh, that they were able to get out. We were able to get the other folks out. They, the uh, prisoners that were in there are also unharmed. And I don't even know miraculously how that happened because there were multiple gunshots fired. Uh, he fired shots while I was on location. Um, he hasn't done so in a while. Um, so we're optimistic that that means he's starting to understand that, you know, there's some benefit to him uh, coming out and surrendering. But we still don't know if that's going to be the case. So I'm in a better position to take some more questions right now than I was before um, because our people are around there and uh, they'll keep me updated as we go forward. All right. How many officers have been discharged? How many officers have been discharged? How many? I, I, you know what? All of them? Okay, so I just walked around the corner. That's just my update. I never even got a chance to get up to Einstein, and, and I, regrettably, I feel bad about that. And I apologize to those officers and their families that I didn't get a chance to do that. I hope they can understand why, um, given the circumstances with two of their fellow comrades that were trapped inside. So my apologies to them for not being able to see how they were doing while they were in the ER. Just, just to clarify, one officer, one officer Einstein. One has been admitted, they're telling me. One has been admitted in Einstein. But that was a car accident, apparently. Apparently, all the gunshot wounds, they, these officers will be able to, you know. So we, we'll clear all that up as we go, as uh, we go forward, particularly relative to uh, names and so forth. But right now, we need to get you the circumstance. Uh, as you know, this was a narcotics warrant that uh, went awry almost immediately. Um, and uh, the officers came under fire. The reason they were in different parts of the house is a protocol, the way they search to make sure safely that they can secure every part of the house as quickly as they can. And unfortunately, some got trapped upstairs, and those are the ones we were talking about. I think they were taking gunfire upstairs as well. Uh, so again, it's nothing short of a miracle that we don't have multiple officers killed today. So we're so thankful. Somebody over here had a question? How did the officers get out? Well, SWAT did that. They were so adept um, at doing that. Um, they've got a skill set that they were able to utilize uh, tonight, and they were able to use stealth to do it. Um, and it was uh, absolutely remarkable the way they did it, to watch that unfold, and to, to do so in large part without him being aware, or at least we don't think he was aware. And so their bravery, as well as the bravery of every other officer that, you know, took fire today because they took fire today as well. You know, just about everybody at that scene did at some point in time. So we've got, once we get him out, we will have a very, very expansive uh, crime scene that we will be at for hours and hours, as you can clearly see. It's clearly not the most optimal circumstance, but obviously officers did return fire initially. Um, and uh, there, there were different bouts of fires he was firing uh, throughout the course of this uh, encounter. All right. All right, folks.
um, I had the opportunity over the last number of hours to listen to the transmissions on the radio, and I can tell you our police officers are not only talented and, and but brave. Uh, that was that was an amazing, intense uh, number of hours going back and forth, listening to gunshots over the radio, uh, listening to officers whispering upstairs because they didn't want the shooter to know where they were located. It was a, it was just a riveting, riveting experience. But our officers need help. They need help. They need help with gun control. They need help with keeping these weapons out of these people's hands. I mean, I told you earlier, the two little boys that were, the officer had his head grazed uh, just a little bit more, and those two little boys will grow up and out with their dad. Because some, because this government, uh, both on the federal and state level, don't want to do anything about getting these guns off the streets and getting them out of the hands of criminals. This guy is clearly a criminal. involved in the criminal justice system before, and he was able to get these weapons, and a large magazine, a large amount of, of bullets. Whether it's, so it's whether it's our six officers who were shot, or it's some 15, 17, 20-year-old kid on the streets of Philadelphia who gets shot with guns that shouldn't be in people's hands. And it's, it's, it's aggravating, it's saddening, uh, and it's just something that we, we, need to, we need to do something about. And if the state and federal government don't want to don't want to stand up to the NRA and some other folks, then let us, let us police ourselves but they preempt us on all kinds of gun control legislation. Our officers deserve to be protected and they don't deserve to be shot at uh, by a guy for hours uh, with an unlimited supply of weapons and an unlimited supply of bullets. So it's disgusting and we gotta do something about it and um, we, we need to do something about it quickly. Yeah, and it may be move situation. I, I can't think of one where, you know, and, and over such a prolonged period of time, because it wasn't like there was just an initial volley of shots upon entry. This went on long after I got here. And so I've not seen that in years. And, you know, John and I have been on 30 years. Yeah, nothing. And move. I've not, I've not seen that. Move, yeah, you all the way back to 85. 85. Okay. Somebody upstairs, somebody upstairs was watching over these cops today. Six cops, all shot, and they're all released and going home to their families. There could very well be three coffins leaving here and three leaving from Einstein. We can't have this. Too many guns out there. We need more support out there. We need the community support. Step up. We're there for you. Come out. Tell us what you need, and we'll get it done. We have the resources. We need cooperation. We need backing, especially in certain offices in the city. Thank you. Thank you. I'll also keep you guys updated on Twitter. Keep following us on Twitter. We'll keep, even if we're just telling you it's the status quo, we'll make sure you keep, we'll keep doing it.